Apple officially announced their iPhone 12 lineup with a 12, 12 mini, 12 Pro, 12 Pro Max. Are they worth upgrading to? Probably not. But if you really have to, we have a couple reasons to help you justify that need. To all subscribe, really appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. Let's start with the six notable changes on the physical aspects of the new iPhone. They finally brought back the squared off design. Coming from the 5S in the past, which I don't even know where it is, it does definitely feel more premium than the round off edges. Second one is the screen size. The iPhone 11 Pro has 5.8 screen size. The new one has 6.1. And the 6.5 on the max version of iPhone 11 is now 6.7. There's actually a slight bump, which is 0.3 inches for the Pro and the 12 model. And the max is just 0.2, which is really negligible. So, I mean, that's still not a justification to upgrade, but it is one of the reasons. <laughs> I miss those days that phone used to be compact and easily held in the hand. I mean, again, this is me talking about 5S and the 2016 version of SE. One reason to upgrade is they introduced the iPhone 12 mini. It has bigger screen than iPhone 8, but in a smaller form factor, which is definitely enticing. And the fourth justification that you can use is basically you're considering the durability of the phone. The new iPhone 12 lineup across all four models have the so-called ceramic, ceramic shield. glass, which they claim to be four times more durable than the existing iPhone 11 and older. That sounds good, but seriously though, how do you claim four times? Does it mean if you drop something, there's one of four chances that it will shatter? I'd actually rather have make sure that it's scratch proof so that I don't have to keep on putting those invisible shields or protective screen protectors. And for number five justification is that new A14 silicone chip. <laughs> These numbers just kept on increasing. I'm honestly satisfied with A13 with the iPhone 11 Pro. It's fast enough. I can play games, but to each his own, right? Another one is actually 5G, which is pretty much, I don't think it's ready for this time. I mean, LTE, LTE, LTE is good enough and some of the folks don't even have 5G, some of the carriers even. But the good thing is, across all iPhone 12 lineups, you don't have to select which one. They're preparing for that move in that direction. They also introduced that MagSafe charging, allowing you to be able to snap the charger in place correctly, as oftentimes in the past, when I use wireless charger, I often miss the actual sweet spot per se, allowing it to charge properly. Now they introduced a magnet to be able to snap into it, even accessories too, even with the casing. They have a magnetic coil in there. And the last item on physical aspect is that blue. It's just gorgeous. Maybe you need that to upgrade the squared of design and the color blue. That can probably justify. Yeah. Moving on to the cameras, what are the notable changes on the new iPhone 12? Let's start with the ultra wide lens, whichever it is on that 3.0 in here. The ultra wide lens still remain 13 millimeter at 2.4 f-stop or aperture. Basically, it's the iris, it's the opening where the light can pass through. The bigger the opening, the smaller the number. So it still remains 2.4 across all iPhone 12 lineup and also all iPhone 11 lineup. Now for the wide lens, which is standard across all iPhone 12, 11, and 10 models. Although it's still in 26 millimeter, the aperture has been improved to 1.6 f-stop from the previous 1.8, which means that it can capture more light faster and better, leading to a better low light photography or video capturing moments. Capture, yeah, capturing videos. The notable improvements is on the 12 Pro Max. They introduced an image sensor, a bigger image sensor, that sensor shift allowing you to stabilize your image better, and that element glass. It used to be six element glass, now seven element glass. Golly, I don't even know what's the difference, to be honest with you. Then the telephoto lens has the same as the 11 Pro, 54 millimeter at 2.0 f-stop or aperture. The improvement, however, is on the Pro Max, which is now 65 millimeter as opposed to the 52 millimeter. It, has, it allows more zoom. Actually, it's more tighter shots just on the Pro Max. And the last one on the camera portion is the introduction of another 
again, the LiDAR sensor. It actually, they made it actually bigger than this one, which also assists on photography and videography or capturing videos. So basically what it does is it helps, it helps aid since LiDAR can see a low light environment. It allows the depth of field and pretty much measurements and it assists in taking photos or videos. What am I buying, a new phone or a camera? <laughs> So the third category or grouping, I should say, is pretty much the software improvements. There's nothing worth note taking on the iPhone 12 lineup because iOS 14 is available even from 6S to newer ones. The pro version, however, of iPhone 12, they introduced that Dol Dolby Vision, which in a nutshell really is just automatic adjustments of color grading, exposure, and tweaks. It's good, but not really a good reason to upgrade. And the second one on the notable software improvement is basically the Apple Pro RAW. They only made it available on the Pro versions. RAW images allow photographers, pro level photographers, to manipulate, convert, pretty much process images and adjust exposures, white balance, and those color space. It's just another level of pro photography, which is typical user would not need it. Anything that you capture in your phone is pretty much good enough. And by the way, all cameras shoot or capture raw images. The difference is that some manufacturers don't make it available because their cameras process it, especially those point and shoot cameras. But DSLR typically makes it available. You just have to tweak the settings. And the difference right now is that Apple is making it available on the iPhone just on the Pro models, which again, technically they can make it available in the 12. They're just trying to separate those two models, I guess. You see, Apple made significant improvements on the iPhone 12, which honestly, 12 is good enough if you're considering the 12 Pro because there's not much notable changes between the two. But if you're considering the 12 Pro Max, then that's a slight bump in the specs. Let's compare these iPhone models side by side, including pricing. Starting with the display, ever since iPhone 10, the screen size has been 5.8 inches. They introduced the iPhone 12 mini, which is 5.4, but still is bigger than the iPhone 8 screen. 12, 12 Pro have 6.1, and the Pro Max is from 6.5 is now 6.7. All iPhone 12 lineup have ceramic glass, which is more durable compared to the prior models. The chipset, is A14, A13 is honestly pretty good speed already, than A11, 5G across all iPhone 12s. Across all iPhone 11 and 12 lineup, ultra wide lens has been the same. As for the wide lens, as mentioned earlier, same 26 millimeter lens, they just improved the aperture. Telephoto, they also improved just on the Pro Max. 12 Pro and 11 Pro have been the same. And the battery life, it kind of varies. The water resistance is actually improved. Pacific blue, silver, graphite, and gold available on the Pro models, white, black, blue, green, and red on the 12. The 699 advertised for the iPhone 12 mini actually require trade-in. So in reality, it is 729. iPhone 12, 829. And then $170 bump from 12 to 12 Pro and $100 bump from 12 Pro to Pro Max. Now that we just did a comparison and have listed the details, which iPhone are you guys upgrading to and what iPhone are you guys coming from? Or what Android are you guys ditching? Comments down below, down below, and let's talk about it. Personally, I'm considering the iPhone 12 mini. The squared off design, the 729 price point, and the specs has the same pretty much across, except for the camera, across all iPhone 12, which is pretty good already. But I still have the 11 Pro, so I might wait for a while until the 2021 with a USB-C connection, unless I sell this one to my wife and buy the iPhone 12. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate those who subscribe. If you haven't, click on that subscribe button for comments, reviews about tech and gadgets and a little bit of finance too. We'll see you guys on the next video. And the like button supports the channel, by the way. Peace.